What are your plans for the rest of the week? Are you gonna do anything exciting? Nope. <laughs> anything. No. Maybe some relatives uh, comes at the weekend. Comes to my house at the weekend. My my okay. nephew nephews and nieces. Nice. That'll be good. It'll be a little bit fun. How old are they? Huh? How old are your nephews and nieces? Uh, how? How old? How old are your nephews and nieces? Ah, uh, my nephews is uh, twenty twenty-six years, and my niece uh, has thirteen years old. Okay, we never say has. So my niece is thirteen uh, years old. My niece is thirteen years old. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, you can say, my nephew is twenty-six years old, or my my nephew is twenty-six. Um, but we couldn't say my nephew is twenty-six years. So you have to say years old, or just twenty-six. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Jose, welcome to class. Jose, how are you doing? Hello, Joshua. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. And you? Nice. Doing really well. Thanks. Thanks for asking. And Jose, well, what's your day been like today so far? My day? Today? Yeah. In the morning, um, I was at home with my family in the, in the, beginning, in the, beginning, on the, in the beginning or in the morning. And mm. after that, uh, uh, around 11 a.m., I, I went to, to work out. Uh, I went to to go running, uh, and after that I I had the uh, the dinner, and now I'm learn I'm I'm uh, learning English. Not the dinner. I had dinner. Ah, dinner. Okay. Without the. No the. No the. Without the. Without the article. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just had dinner. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Good. And let's get started with today's class. Um, and Miguel, can you read the title and the words? Okay. Literature. Today we will read some quotations, practice verbs, con conjugations. Practice uh, role play and uh, read comics. Okay, read. Read comics. Read comics. And literature. 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 Good. Literature. Okay. And I think we're good. One more time, actually. Literature. Literature. Good. Nice. And Miguel, can you ask Jose the first question? Were you ever given a bad good recommendation? Yes, I have a, I have a, uh, given a bad good recommendation. I didn't like the uh, book. Um, about uh, about the uh, David David uh, Copperfield. I didn't uh, like uh, this book. I I uh, this book was very boring for me. So Charles Dickens. Um, yeah, one of the things about Charles Dickens is he wrote and he was paid by the word. The word. So it made his books a little bit longer than they needed to be, um, and they were published like every every week, every month. Um, so it's in okay. sections. Yeah. So it's part of the reason why his books are so long. If you're interested. Um, okay. And yeah. And I guess can you ask Heidi the next question, Jose? Okay. Heidi, how important is is the cover of the book? 
uh, covered a book is important for me uh, because I often bring out the book and I read uh, the books uh, in the train or bus. If the cover is uh, strange or um, dirty or <laughs> not beautiful, uh, I hesitate uh, to read the book in front of people. <laughs> okay. The cover is strange or dirty or not beautiful. You hit hide the book? Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to put another cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. And have you ever been stuck with an ugly book in public transportation and been embarrassed about it? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't read uh, such a strange book. <laughs> okay. So you generally choose books with nice covers or covers that you like? Yes, yes. Uh, if I uh, the cover of the right kind of nude, I can't <laughs> bring it in the front of people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it would be kind of embarrassing. Um, okay, and maybe just right at the beginning, cover of book is what I'd heard. Mm -hmm. The cover of book. Yeah. The cover of book. Yeah, the covers of books sounds the best to me. You could also say book covers. Book cover. oh. Are. But really nicely done. And Heidi, can you ask Miguel the next question? We watched the movie that came from a book, or why or not? Why not? Um, personally, I don't read so much. I, I read only books about technical issues. Uh, relative to my job, but I think yes, I I I watch a movie uh, to relate to some books. Fake. Uh, 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 I'm with the sense of the movie was so different that the the history the history, the history at my head. Um, so we wouldn't say history, we'd just say story. History is like a subject in school. Um, so like, I think the movies are always different than the stories in my head. I I always differ in that the story at my head. Then the stories. Then the head. stories in my head. Okay. Yeah. Definitely, they change a lot. Okay. And I think we're good here. Do any of you guys have any questions? And Jose, can you read through the words? Okay. Vocabulary. Metaphor. Allusion. Connotation. Euphemies. Hyperbole. Oxymoron. Personification. Anecdote. Paradox. Okay. Uh, really nicely done. A couple small things. Hyperbole. Hyperbole, hyperbole. And oxymoron. Oxymoron, oxymoron. Yeah. Okay, and questions about these words? Okay. Okay, maybe... Heidi, can you make a sentence in... the past perfect using metaphor?
Heidi? What, what did you say? Part of perfect. A part perfect. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, perfect. Um, uh, he uh, he used he had uh, used a good metaphor uh, in his books. When I read uh, when I read the book, I thought so. Okay. Um. <laughs> no. He had used good what? He had used a good met metaphor in his book. When I read his book, I thought so. <laughs> okay. A good metaphor in his book. Yeah, even... <laughs> I think that would be better in the past. So when I read his book, I thought he, yeah, I thought he'd used a good metaphor. Mm. Um, I thought he used a good metaphor might sound better. That is a stretch, using it in the past perfect. Um, you could say, I wish I had never um, read the book. He used awful metaphors. Mm -hmm. um, um. Like had read mm -hmm. would be a good way um, of doing it. But yeah, I mean, it was a really good idea, and you definitely know what the past perfect is. So nice job. Um, Miguel, can you make a sentence with connotation? Maybe in the past the past progressive. Maybe the present progressive. Uh, uh, I don't understand what connotations. Okay. Oh, so you don't. I, I always confuse about the connotation and the notation. Mm -hmm. So they're similar. Uh, does anybody know the difference? Maybe Jose or Heidi? Uh, maybe it's opposite. Okay. So connotation and so what would they mean? Connotation is an idea or meaning uh, suggested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with like a, a word or thing. Yeah, like a reference. Um, definitely. So it's an associated meaning, maybe? Yeah. Uh, What about denotation? Denotation is uh, uh, showing that the meaning uh, clearly. Yeah. Sentences. Clearly showing. Uh, I should probably write denotation first. So denotation is clearly showing the meaning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, explicitly saying it, yeah, where the connotation is like associated and it's kind of suggested. Does that make sense, Miguel? Yes. Okay. And, yeah. Do you think you could make a sentence with connotation? Maybe just the sentence. Mm. Sorry, I can't imagine any situations. <laughs> okay, Jose, do you think you could make a sentence with connotation? Yes. I read a, a, a book uh, with uh, some good connotations. Okay. 
okay. I read a book with some good connotations. Maybe uh, use read in the past tense. I read a book. Yes, I read a book. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it works. Um, okay. Yeah. Maybe, Heidi, can you make a sentence with the same word, maybe a little bit different? A connotation? Mm hmm. Uh, connotation. Uh, what tense? Any tense. You can use it anyway. Just use it in a sentence. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um. How can I say? <laughs> um. Any. Yeah. Uh, it's so difficult to understand the meaning of connotation. Yeah, it's it's really tricky to get it into a sentence. Um, a, a word uh, sometimes uh, has uh, different connotations. Mhm. Mm yeah, that word has a lot of different connotation of different connotations. Be careful when you use it. That'd be great, Jose. Nice job. Okay. That's a really good one. So we've got words that have different connotations, words with different, like, implied meanings. Um, yeah. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, maybe <laughs> let's go back to Miguel. Uh, Miguel, can you make a sentence with hyperbole? Hyperbole. Um, that what what means hyperbole? What means hyperbole? Can you guys, uh, Jose or Heidi? Yes, ex guys, exaggeration. Yeah, exaggeration is hyperbole. And so, the question, Miguel, we need to change a little bit. How would you change this question? We need the verb to do. Miguel, do you understand? Um, How would you change the question? Okay. Heidi, how would we change this question? Heidi? What does it mean, uh, hyperbole, the word hyperbole? Well, what does it... What, what hyperbole... Uh, what does hyperbole mean? mean? Yeah. But what does hyperbole mean? Remember we couldn't say what does it mean, hyperbole? Does hyperbole, hyperbole mean? Hyperbole. Hyperbole means... Uh-huh. Hyperbole means exaggeration. Um, so this is a tough one too. Then, if you don't really know what it means, do you think you could use it in a sentence, Miguel? Nope. Okay. Um, Jose, do you think you could use it in a sentence? Yes. Uh, I could sleep for a year. Uh, this uh, sample of uh, hyperbole. <laughs> that works. This yeah. sentence is an example of hyperbole. Of hyperbole, okay. Um, nice. <laughs> That's a good way of doing it. Um, yeah, you can also use the word hyperbolic. So, you know, don't be hyperbolic if you want to use it as an adjective. Um, 
Okay. Miguel, it seems, do you have other questions about any of these words? Are there any other words you don't know? I don't understand why. What are you asking? You don't understand. What words do you have a question about? What words don't you, do you not know? Mm. Paradox. What those paradox means? Paradox. Okay, Heidi. What's a paradox? Uh, paradox is um, thinking about uh, two things are opposite, <laughs> opposite meaning or opposite things, things of opposite, like uh, uh, sound of silence. That's more like an oxymoron. Uh huh. A paradox. So ah. Okay, uh, comparing two things, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, not theoretical. Uh, for example, this uh, shield is very strong uh, for any peer, spears. And uh, instead, this spear is very strong. It penetrates any steel. Well, uh, which will win if both of things fight? Yeah. Oh. Any shield and the strongest shield, which will um, block any spear, which will win. Yeah, so it's a paradox is something that sounds logical, it doesn't make sense. So another way, another paradox that we have um, that's kind of easy is if we have a tree and you throw a ball at the tree, so the ball is going that way, it has to go half the distance to the tree. So it always is going to go half the distance. So the first half is good, you get there, and then the second half is good, and you get closer, and the third half, you get even closer, and the fourth half, you get closer, but you never can arrive if you keep increasing by half. So it's a paradox that we know that the ball will get to the tree, but we know it always has to go one half the distance to the tree. But there are infinite, infinite half distances. Impossible to arrive like that. Does that make sense, Miguel? The idea of a paradox? Miguel? Uh, I'm not sure. Um. Hmm. Hold on. One second. So, what was it that you didn't understand? Really quickly. Ah, uh, bueno. Miguel, hablas español, ¿no? Miguel? Sí, te escucho. Ah, ok. Entonces, una paradoja would be paradox. Una paradoja como la idea de que algo tiene razón, pero en realidad no funciona. O es imposible. Entonces, okay. lógicamente funciona, pero en realidad es algo imposible. Ok. Ok. So, that's a paradox. Um, any other questions, guys? Okay. Um, let's go. 
Let's read this. And Jose, can you read the paradox? Okay. A slim, however, if you don't predict his fate correctly, I'll eat him. What statement should the mother make to save her child? Good. Nice pronunciation of child. Let's look at Nile. Nile. Egged. Backed. And stated. 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 Okay. Uh huh. Okay. And can you read, maybe, Heidi, can you read the definition of a sophist? Mm -hmm. uh, sophist, a person who reasons uh, ad ador adorority tree. Adorority tree. <laughs> And especially, uh, uh, speciously, okay, and speciously rather than assembly. Yeah, adroitly and speciously. Adroitly. Yeah, so it's like adroitly, adroitly. Huh. So it's like cleverly or smartly. Mm -hmm. um, so you reason well, but your reasoning does make very much sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a sophist. Okay, and Heidi, so let's look at the first option. So if she says, you will give him back, what what might happen? There are two things that might happen. What might happen? Um. You will give him back. You will give him back. That means uh, you put the kit on your back, and then you can't eat him. <laughs> no. Uh, um. So if if he's if she says like you will give me the child back, so if she's got like two options. No, no. Either you, saying, you with her husband, and give him him with the child. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess supposing she only has so only you, has two You will give him you are back always. Well hmm. So I I mean that would be technically an option. So if she only has two options, if she mm -hmm. says you so will return him But I said like that. You you should give him that you are back. So you can't eat him. Or uh, you you will return him. Uh, you can uh, come back here because the husband is afraid of eating his kid. So I'm slightly confused. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just I mean let's keep it a little bit simple. Let's keep it with the crocodile mm -hmm. and the mother. And so the crocodile gives the mother two options, sort of, yeah. at least in this idea. So he says, so there are two options. He's like, eat the child or give the child back to the mother. And so the mother has to choose which one he'll do. Hmm. What, what will happen if she chooses to say, you're going to return so, him to me. As I mentioned before, you should come back um, six or seven or eight months later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that totally works. I guess we're just trying to explore, you know, th this, the paradox here. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Miguel, so if she says you return him, what would happen? So there are two things that could happen if she says that. Uh, the co the crocodile uh, will eat if the boy. Yeah. Uh, so if she's or that that's what happened. The crocodile will 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 eat. Eat the child. Okay. Well, that's one thing that's possible. The crocodile will eat the child. Or 
the crocodile will what will say? What's will, the other option? Will, will buy the child? Um. Well, so sh if she guesses correctly what the crocodile does with him, he will return him. So yes. if she says you'll return him and he returns him, she will have guessed correctly. So if she says you will return him, he could yes. return the child. Okay, the crocodile but, will return the child. Yeah. So either could happen if she says you will return him. Either the crocodile will eat him because that will be correct, because she will have guessed incorrectly. Or she says, you return him and he returns him, and that would be correct. So she's got like a 50-50 chance. Um, there. If she says, you'll eat him, this is where it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, Jose, what happens if she says, you'll eat him? If the crocodile, crocodile eat him, uh, the the child uh, won't uh, return uh, to his mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if she says you'll eat him, the crocodile eats him, but she will have guessed correctly. Correctly. So he will have had to return the child. Yes. And two... The crocodile have had to return the child. Sort of, yeah. So the crocodile ate the child, but she guessed correctly because she said you'll eat him, yes. and so he'll have to give him back, which would mean she was incorrect. So... What if what if the crocodile gives the child back, Heidi? Mm -hmm. If if the crocodile gives gives the mom the boy after mm -hmm. she says you'll eat him, what happens? Another possibility is uh, uh, if he uh, he uh, is aware of uh, uh, his father, other he his father. Maybe he would be uh, patient <laughs> to eat <laughs> his kid. Um, the father. Father, yeah. What? But I don't know what you mean by the father, because there's no father in this story. Mother. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, but it's just the mother and a crocodile mm. in the story that we've got. I don't eat. Uh, he, uh, she doesn't eat him. Protect. Hmm. I mean, so yeah. Um, so I guess the other option is if she says you'll eat him, the crocodile. Could return the child, but then yes. she will have been incorrect, and the crocodile will have to eat the child, in which case she would have been correct. And so it's kind of this returning cycle. So if she says you'll eat yes. him, it goes into like this spiral where there's but, no resolution. But, uh, Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys kind of understand the paradox? Yes, it is uh, self-contradictory. Yeah. So that's why he's a sophist, because it's a contradictory statement. It's a paradox. It sounds logical, because it's like, oh, just two options, pretty logical. But when you play them out, they don't make sense. Miguel, do you understand? Uh, yeah. Okay. And Heidi, do you do you get this? Hmm, yeah, but it's not ah, okay. What? It's not what? No, no, it's okay. 
I, right. I don't want to waste time. Okay. Right. Um, okay, and Heidi, can you ask Miguel the first question? Mm -hmm. What factors are important uh, to you when uh, choosing a book to read? Mm, the the kind of history. We wouldn't say history. History, not history. It's a different what? word. We can't use history in English. History. Mm -mm. So history in English is a subject. We wouldn't use it to talk about books. What word could you use? What's a different word? History. Mm -mm. We'd say the story. Story. So that history is the school subject, and story is story. book, novel. Story. Story, story. Yeah, so the kind of story. The, the name of the pool. Um, the, the author. Mm -hmm. And the, the cross, numbers of pages. <laughs> The number of pages of the book. Okay. And Miguel, can you ask Jose the next question? What is one of your favorite books? Yes, it was a book that uh, I read um, five or six years ago. The turn around the world in 80 days. It was around in the, the, around the world in, in 18 days, yes. It was interesting. Uh, it was an adventure book. Adventure book. Nice. Who wrote it? Who is the author? The, the other? Who is the author? The, the author. Uh, I, I didn't remember the author. Uh, you don't remember the author. I, I don't remember the author. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, and why it, did you it, like it? it? It's very famous. Mm -hmm. It is very the, famous. The author is very famous. Uh, I like it uh, because... Be, be, because be, because the plot was interesting for me um, all the, around the, the, the book uh, a lot of a lot of uh, things uh, was uh, happening okay nice and I'm pretty sure the author is Jules Verne Ah, Jules Verne, okay. Yeah, okay. And can you ask, Jose, can you ask yes. Heidi the next question? Heidi, what was the last book that uh, you read? Last book? That, that you read? Um, now I'm re reading a Spanish book. Short stories. Okay. What's it called? Uh, a lot of stories, like uh, um, fairy tales or something. Okay. Did you ever finish The Alchemist? Because it's very uh, short, so. Every day I finish one story. Uh-huh. Good. Did you finish The Alchemist? 
Ah, yes, yes. I already finished. I read, I read it twice. Good. Did you like it? As a story, uh, not so much. Okay. Why not? Mm, it's not my field. Okay. Good answer. Broad. I mean, any specific reason other than it's not your field? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. I've never read such kind of uh, book. I've never read such kind of book before that. Okay. So it's a little bit dry. Um, yeah. Okay, to the point, too. Good. And maybe what about you, Miguel? What was the last book you read? Uh, the last book that I read for entertainment was the, in Spanish, was was called La Estrella. Um, the author is Otmandino. Okay. I, uh, I, I read that book um, 15 years ago. Wow. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, wow, yeah, did you like it? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, we need a pronoun. I enjoyed very much. We still need a pronoun. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed is good. Um, pronouns are I, you, he, she, it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so I enjoyed it. Or you could use a noun, I enjoyed the book. Um, but we need something. I enjoyed what? What did you enjoy? Um, so I enjoyed it very much. Okay. Um, <laughs> definitely a long time ago. What about you, Jose? What was the last book you read? The last book that I read, uh, it was David uh, Corperfield. It it was about a guy that uh, all, all the time was in travels. In the beginning, uh, his parents died, and after that, uh, he had to find a, a job. Uh, and the end of the book, uh, he fall in love uh, with a girl. Okay. He fell in love with a girl. What happened with the girl? Uh, I think uh, he, they got married. Okay. I guess that's not too bad. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. And he didn't like it. Um, and it was boring. Okay. Good. I think that's, that's a good answer, though. Does anybody have any questions here? Okay. And let's have Heidi. Can you read the title and the roles? Okay. Uh, replay at the question that is out. A star, a star crossed lover, lover uh, whose family is an uh, enemy. Okay. A young wizard find, uh, fighting the evil without to kill his parents. A crazy knight and his uh, chubby, but, uh, but then uh, squire. And what's the last one? Can you make up another one? Mm, another one. Um, a man uh, whose wife was killed by someone. But um, police also doubted him. So he ran away from the place and, uh, and look, looks... looks for the killer. Okay, who's he talking to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, who, who will this one be talking to? So he's a man, He his wife was killed by somebody, uh, the police officer doubts him. So is the police officer the other character? Yes. Okay. 
Now the police officer is persistent. He followed him. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Miguel, which one of these roles do you want to play? Which role? Which role play would you like? Oh. Oops. Uh, uh, crazy Nike. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, if you are the knight, uh, how would you start us off, Miguel? No, no. Every every time this one, so please. I change. know. Um, um, this third time, I already born. Yeah. Um, yeah, Miguel. So we've done this one like three times. Is there another one that you could choose? Would you mind? Uh, uh, I, uh, a man. A man whose wife was killed. Okay. And so if you're the man, Miguel, how would you start off? I need to search about the, the criminals, so for criminals who, who has, was, get out from the prison in the last year. Okay, we need to search for the criminals we would use the simple past here. Okay, let's get off. Simple past of the verb to get. Who was? The verb to get. Get got. Simple past of the verb to get. Got? Yeah. So who got different preposition. Um, so it's an O preposition. Out. Mm -hmm. And another O preposition. Of. Uh -huh. No article. Need to search for the criminals who got out of prison last year. Um, last year. Can you repeat that whole sentence, Miguel? I need to search for the criminals who who got out of prison last year. Good, Jose. How would you respond? Okay, I think this man is it. Uh, was not possible that uh, he had uh, he had killed his, his wife because he a neighbor uh, saw him uh, buying uh, at the grocery at this time. Okay. <laughs> Negative to think. We need to negate think. Uh, I don't think. I don't think this man killed. Okay. His wife because maybe I saw him. Yes. But I at this time. Hmm. In this time, buying at the grocery in this time. At this time works. Um, okay. Buying. So we could say either buying groceries or. Uh, okay, okay. Shopping. I saw I saw him uh, buying groceries or shopping at the grocery at this time. At, at the, the grocery, grocery store at this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and Heidi, how would you respond? 
the mom. Mm. Uh, okay, finally, I I got a clue about the murder. The mother might be my co-worker. But this morning, I found the police officer from the window of my room. So I need to move to another city. So this morning, I found the police officer at the window of my, uh, at the window of my room. My room, and the hotel room. Okay, so who's the man talking to here, Heidi? Um, um, by by himself. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, find it. I'm not sure how we would have somebody respond to that. He's talking uh, to himself. Yeah, I realize. But how, I mean, so if we're doing a role play, we just have to have like a kind of a back and forth between two characters. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure how we would have Miguel respond. Um, mm -hmm. It just oh. a, makes it a little bit difficult. Oh, he already found him oh, from his window, so uh, Miguel should stay about that. Um, okay. I mean, Miguel, do you have anything you... How, how, Going to the hotel or something. Okay, Miguel, do you have? How would you respond? Do you think? Hey, man, listen to me. Don't do something bad. We need to make an investigation before to make conclusions. Before we make. Make. Before make. we make any conclusions. All right. All right, nice. Okay. Good job, good grammar. That looks great. So we are just about out of time. We've got another class after this. If you guys want to join, I'd love to see you guys there. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for coming Bye. in. Bye. And, yeah, have a really good day. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.